Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Jap, and I'm actually pretty excited about this video because when Nvidia first launched their DLSS AI upscaling technology with RTX cards last year, I thought it had a lot of potential. But it turned out that while yes, it did boost frame rates, particularly when using ray tracing, it could often make graphics look a little blurry and low res, and it would just kind of smooth everything out too much. So now enter DLSS 2.0 which Nvidia are promising offers similar increases in frame rates, which can be pretty massive ones in some cases, but this time it shouldn't compromise image quality. Sounds great, but is it too good to be true? Well, I ran a whole bunch of tests uh, in a variety of DLSS2 enabled games, and to tell you the truth, I think Nvidia's cracked it. So I've actually teamed up with Nvidia for this video. They are very kindly sponsoring it, uh, but I, uh, I'm not doing very well back there. <laughs> I should say uh, that all my uh, tests are my own. These are impartial results, 100%, and all my conclusions are my own. They just wanted uh, me to basically cover this topic because they're so proud of it. But before we dive into the numbers, a bit of background on DLSS and what exactly it is. Well, it stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling, and it uses dynamic AI and a whole lot of deep learning thanks to NVIDIA's supercomputers to take a lower res image and then intelligently build it up to look like a native higher res 1080p, 1440p, or 4K image. And the upshot is this then boosts frame rates in games, in some cases more than doubling it. Now, to be honest, when I first tried DLSS in Battlefield 5 last year, it kind of looked a bit smudgy and a lot of the background detail was missing. DLSS also needed to be trained on each game individually, which was pretty time consuming and costly. But over the last year, DLSS has been learning and improving, and now Nvidia have completely reworked it for DLSS 2.0. This time it's faster, image quality is clearly much better, and now it can train itself on general game content, so it doesn't actually have to be pre-trained on a per-game basis. So we should see it rolled out with a lot more titles, like the upcoming Cyberpunk 2077 and Minecraft with RTX. So essentially, if you have a desktop PC or a laptop with a NVIDIA RTX card, or even a RTX Max Q card and laptop, and then you play one of the supported games, in the game's graphics settings, you'll be presented with three options. Performance, Balanced, and Quality. So if you're playing at 1080p with DLSS set to performance or quality, then the game is actually running at 540p or 720p respectively, and then intelligently upscaling back up to 1080. Now I must admit, I always assumed that DLSSS, DLSSSS, D <laughs> two S's, DLSS. Now I must admit that I always thought DLSS uh, went hand in hand with ray tracing, RT, uh, and that you always had to have RT to have DLSS, but that's not the case. And actually DLSS 1 and especially 2 can offer significant performance boosts even without ray tracing. But anyway, what does this all mean for gaming? Because it's all well and good if you've got a 2080 Super or 2080 Ti and you've got uh, more frames than you can eat for breakfast. But what about something more affordable like a RTX 2060? This is the cheapest way to get DLSS 2. And I wanted to know if it gets meaningful boost to frame rates and how much better is image quality this time around? So for each test, I've kept graphical settings the same and simply switched between DLSS or standard TAA anti-aliasing as available. And in the interest of keeping this video to a sensible length and not boring you all to death, I'm going to concentrate on DLSS's quality and performance settings. So I want to start with control because actually I was able to test DLSS 1 uh, before the patch updated it to DLSS 2 so we can actually use control as a control to see what the performance and visual difference is between the old and new versions of DLSS. It's a good looking game and ray tracing definitely makes a worthwhile difference here, but in my experience it almost halves the frame rate. Now the original DLSS definitely boosted frame rates, but it introduced a lot of artifacting and seemed to smear and blur everything, particularly backgrounds and around edges. Now, first impressions of DLSS 2 are that things are much better. The image is a lot clearer and the blur has been minimized. So for example, at native 1080p, this chain link fence looks a little ragged, but it's obvious what it is. When I switch to DLSS 1 at its highest setting, the frame rate jumps from 43 to 77 FPS, but the fence is, well, kind of gone. Things are obviously a lot less defined and we've got noisy artifacts on top of that. Move to DLSS 2 though and everything is much clearer. Compared to the native, we've actually gained detail, particularly on the fence and the handrails. And we're still up at 77 FPS from the native 43. Switching to DLSS 2's performance mode makes things look a little bit too noisy, with some distracting aliasing around the edges. If we zoom in on this logo at native 1080, we can see it's kind of noisy and a little bit blurred. With DLSS 1, it gets even blurrier, although again, the frame rate jumps massively from 38 to 66 FPS, but switching to DLSS 2 on quality mode and everything is so much clearer, although it can look a little bit over sharpened sometimes. And the frame rate is up to 72 FPS compared to 38 without DLSS 2. Moving to this office scene, and we can see just how much detail is present with DLSS 2, especially the binders, the desks, and the notice board on the wall. 
Finally, if we look at the chart, we can see that the overall frame rates are pretty similar between DLSS 1 and 2 at both 1080p and 1440p. And it was the same story with ray tracing turned off. Similar image quality and around the same boosted performance. All right, next up, Wolfenstein Youngblood. Now this is already a great performing game, even with ray tracing, which I definitely recommend using as it adds much more realistic surface reflections. Now ray traced native 1440p with ultra settings averaged 57 FPS across both benchmark scenes. But then with DLSS set to quality, we saw this jump up to 83. That's a 40% improvement. And to my eye, pretty much the same image quality. At 1080p, with ray tracing and DLSS in quality mode, we go from 94 to 121 FPS on average. And switching to performance mode takes it up to 137, which is a 45% boost, and close to maxing out a 144Hz monitor, even with ray tracing on. As for image quality, well, zoomed out at 1080p, things look pretty similar, but if we zoom in, it's clear that DLSS offers a little bit more detail, especially on the pipes in the background, with performance mode again being a bit noisier. Moving on to Deliverers the Moon, and ray tracing adds things like real-time reflections here, especially to surfaces like Windows, which looks great, but again it halves the frame rate. So does DLSS 2 help? Well, at 1080p, with ray tracing and DLSS set to quality, we see a 70% uplift in frame rate, and selecting performance takes it up to another level, two and a half times the native frame rate. And the image quality is pretty similar as well. The gloves look maybe a smidgen sharper with DLSS, but it's close. As for backgrounds, fine details like text definitely look more legible with DLSS, especially on quality mode. Turn on DLSS without ray tracing, and again, things look very similar. At 1080p, quality mode boosts frame rates by 29%, and performance by 47%. Jump up to 1440, and then quality and performance modes give you 32 and 61% boost respectively. Next up is MechWarrior 5 Mercenaries, which actually offers DLSS 2, but without ray tracing. Now compared to native 1440p, I got around 41% higher frame rates using DLSS performance mode. However, 1080p results weren't as exciting, with only a 7% increase using performance, and about the same as native res with quality mode. Native 1440p and both DLSS 2 modes look, well, pretty similar actually here. And lastly, image quality in this low light final shot looks pretty similar as well. But if we zoom in, we can see how DLSS changes the particle effects from the welder, making the sparks much more dramatic looking. But here we can see some slight artifacting from DLSS trying to interpolate between pixels. So far then, all my tests have been running using the RTX 2060, but what if you were to say use an RTX 2080 Ti, crank up all the settings and then turn on DLSS 2? In control at 1440p with ray tracing and high settings, the 2080 Ti averaged 44 FPS, which shows just how demanding this game can be. But turn on DLSS quality mode and it jumps up to 74 FPS. Back to Wolfenstein again at 1440 with ultra settings and RT, and we're looking at 110 FPS. But with DLSS quality, this jumps up to 135, while performance hits 148. That's a lot for a maxed out RT game. Deliverer of the Moon is surprisingly taxing on the TI. On max settings with RT at 1440p, it averaged 46 FPS. Fortunately, DLSS quality and performance brings it up to a much smoother 73 and 100 FPS respectively. Just think about it, 46 to 100 frames per second. And finally, in MechWarrior 5, again at 1440p max settings but no RT, we're at 115 FPS. But with DLSS enabled, this goes to 120 or 133 for the quality and performance settings. Still pretty worthwhile gains. Okay, so that was a lot to take in, so I appreciate you bearing with me and also listening to me say DLSS about a million times. And to be honest, I didn't really know what to expect when going into this test, but I have to say, just looking at the results, it's seriously impressive stuff. And I found that DLSS 2 in quality mode, and when playing at 1440p, brought the biggest benefits. So I think at the very least, it's another option for gamers like me and you uh, to get basically free performance out of the hardware we already have. In this crazy time, we can't all go out and spend tons and tons of money on the highest end kit. You want to get the most out of what you already have. And so if you do have an RTX card in your desktop or your laptop, and then you're playing a game that supports it, I definitely recommend turning DLSS 2 on. Downsides? Well, to my eye, I think sometimes it can over sharpen the images, which can then sometimes look a little bit noisier, particularly with the performance mode, but that's pretty much it. So just like with ray tracing, uh, NVIDIA will continue to add DLSS support to more and more games over time, uh, and as I say, I'll put a full list in the description below. So hopefully you found this video useful, and I'd love to know what you make of DLSS and also ray tracing in the comments below. Do you think NVIDIA have made enough progress? Do you think it's worthwhile now? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and if you do want to see more from me, if you're not sick of my face and my voice just yet, uh, then hit that subscribe button down below, and also give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Chat.